With this here, this ain't about being flashy. This is game day, son. It's only about one thing. Getting that W. That's the only thing that matters right now. Boy, are you ready? The past is the past, you know? Hey guys, welcome back to uh, the Week 17 Preview Podcast. You know, it's, it's Week 17 and hopefully you're already enjoying your championship trophies and uh, league, you know, league prizes. But uh, we recognize there's a small minority of leagues out there that still play their championships through Week 17. You know, whether it's the two-week championship weeks or, or what have you, you know, we're, we're here to help you see it through the end. So today's podcast, we're going to preview all the Week 17 games. Next week, obviously, we're going to have our season wrap-up show and, and take a little break for a little while here during the off-season. But uh, make sure to keep checking back throughout the off-season because we definitely do our fair share of off-season podcasts, too. Matt, any guess on how many podcasts we did last year from March to August? 21. Well, not, not quite that many. Still 13. We did 13, but that's a, that's a podcast every about two weeks or so during the off-season. So every two to, you know two weeks or so. That's uh, it's pretty good, uh, pretty good, you know, consistency there throughout the off season. So make sure to keep checking back. But you know, Matt, if there's anything that's going to derail anybody in their week 17 fantasy championships, I, I feel like inactives is going to be the biggest one. You know, whether it be you know a team sitting out their players hurt, you know, to let them heal up for the for the postseason run, or just because they've pretty much given up on the year, the year's over, no sense in, in playing your studs. So. You know, I think the biggest thing, the big from this podcast to take away, watch the inactives, pay attention to what the head coaches are saying on what uh, playing time is going to be. Because even guys like Jamal Charles that are going to play this weekend, sounds like they may not play a whole lot. Um, Matt, before we get into the preview of the games, anything you want to point out about what to watch for in Week 17? No, I mean, I agree. The, the toughest thing is is your guys like the Jamal Charles. You know, all indications are going to be uh, – Play Niles, da- Niles Davis, you know. It, it's tough, though, when you've got a guy like him and, and you're actually, count, you know, Week 17 matters to you. That's why you're listening. And you've yeah. got to sit a guy like him, possibly. It's tough to do that. Um, real, real tough. Sometimes this play your studs doesn't quite work for this week. No, it's it's such th- – this is exactly the reason why, like we've said in previous podcasts, I won't play in these types of leagues that play in Week right. 17. Because yeah. losing Jamal Charles kills you. And what could kill you even more – is starting a guy like Jamal Charles, and then you know he only plays two series or something like that, and yeah. and Miles Davis takes over. So even in actives, you know, even if a guy like Charles is active, it's still kind of hard to trust him. You know, it's just one of those things that this is exactly the reason why I hate Week 17s. But let's get into the matchups here: Panthers and Falcons. You know, I think I'm probably going off the reservation on this one, Matt, but. I get Steven Jackson all the way up to my running back 13 this week against a strong Panthers run defense. Uh, before you kill me a little bit too much on that, because obviously a bad matchup and a, and a running back that really hasn't been getting the yards in big chunks this year, just wanted to point out six touchdowns in his last five games. And Carolina, you know, we know how good they are against the run. They've only allowed three rushing touchdowns all season to running backs, but They've allowed back-to-back weeks of over 100 yards rushing to opposing running backs. You know, that included last week when Mark Ingram, you know, yes, that Mark Ingram had 6.4 yards per carry. And then the week before that, they allowed a combined 5.4 yards per carry to the combination of Chris Ivory and Bilal Powell. So I still think Steven Jackson's going to have a decent day here. You know, obviously he's getting the goal line work, but what do you think, Matt? Is running back 13 just crazy, crazy high on Steven Jackson? No, I don't think so at all. He's been uh, Michael Turner, um, you know, a, a guy that's getting those touchdowns. This is what we thought it would be all year. It's taken some time, but I think Steven Jackson is here. You know, um, the, the offense seems to have improved quite a bit from, you know, when they were at their lowest point. Steven Jackson's healthy. He's getting every opportunity when they get in the, into the red zone, uh, you know, goal line. So, yeah, I, I have no problems with that. I know this is a tough defense. Uh, but also, this is a tough week to to rank. You know, you got to take into account those those Kansas City Chiefs, those Denver Broncos. You know, those games that don't really mean a ton. Um, and then you look at guys like Stephen Jackson. He's played seasons with slip discs on a one in fifteen team. 
he's going to give it everything he's got no matter when, as long as they're lacing it up for Sunday. So he's a guy that you tend to actually, I think, like a little more in a Week 17 pointless matchup. He's just got pride, uh, and he'll play regardless. Yeah. And then, Matt, you mentioned, you know, obviously the Falcons really stepping it up lately on offense. And another guy that I think has been a, a, big, a big reason for that, it seems to be a healthy Roddy White. You know, he seems to be back over the last four games. He's second in the NFL in receptions, fourth in yards, and tied for fifth in targets. You know, I, I know a lot of people are saying that you still can't trust Roddy White, especially in this matchup, but I, I have him as a strong wide receiver too this week with those numbers he's been putting up. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you want to listen to me about Roddy White, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, kill, I killed you all season, but I, I think he's back. Um, it took longer than I expected, but this is what I thought when Roddy would get back to healthy. He didn't fall off a cliff. He's not 40 years old. He's still Roddy White. So, yeah, I expected this. Uh, it just took a lot longer than I, than I thought. Yeah. Panthers side here, uh, D'Angelo Williams, Matt, two touchdowns in his previous 13 games this season, the first 13 games of the season, two touchdowns now in, in, in his last two games. So really big difference there. First 13 games of the year, two touchdowns. Last two games, two touchdowns. I still don't trust him even in this decent matchup. What about you? No, I mean, I've, I've been on record the last couple of weeks liking D'Angelo, and he's been proving me right. Um, the only thing is this week Jonathan Stewart may be back from what I've heard, uh, and I don't know, Marcus, do you, know, do you have any updates on that for me? I haven't heard any news on Stewart. Yeah, so that's something to pay attention to. If Stewart comes back, then D'Angelo goes right back to where he was, you know, before this last couple games stretch uh, when Stewart came back where it was a three-headed monster in Carolina and you didn't want any piece of it. Um, it's, it, it really all con it's all contingent upon Stewart or not. If Stewart doesn't play him, fine playing D'Angelo. Actually, we'll li uh, like to play him. Otherwise... I don't really want any piece of that backfield. Yeah, I, I don't want any piece either way. But Ravens and Bengals, Andy Dalton, I'm starting to become a believer in him. I mean, the number four quarterback on the season, his yards, touchdowns, attempts, completions, average yards per completion, quarterback rate, rating, you name it. But over the last three years have gone up each of the last three years. So he's showing that growth, showing that he's throwing more, throwing for more yards, more touchdowns more efficiently every year, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, for this year, obviously it's a little bit over, but, you know, I think next year he's going to be a sneaky quarterback one, kind of like what Tony Romo was this year, a guy that you could pick up in the 10th, 12th rounds um, and get top 10 production out of him. And, and I have him as a quarterback one this week, right on the edge at quarterback 12. And then uh, another guy that I just think is sneaky from, from the Bengals side, Marvin Jones, you know, I talked about him last week, and I'm you know, talking about him again here, but eight or more fantasy points in each of the last three weeks, you know, just a sneaky play for deeper leagues, 16-team leagues, and daily fantasy leagues. Matt, did you want to add anything on the Bengals side of the ball? No, actually, I, this was a point that I wanted to make sure we did bring up. Uh, direct correlation, too. Look at look at the numbers. Dalton um, has has done well the last three games as well, so obviously there's a, there's a reason for that. Jones getting involved again. You know, we saw some flashes at the beginning of the season. I think he's a talented player from what I've seen. I like the, the kid. Obviously, uh, A.J. Green is great. So when you've got a compliment on the other side to go with those running backs, um, the quarterback's got a lot of help. So I, I like your call. They're all young guys, too. Giovanni, A.J., Marvin Jones, Dalton, chance to grow. So, yeah, next year you can only assume um, increased results like he has been doing uh, throughout his career so far. And, and a quick note, too, here, if you're starting Bengals players, Tyler Eifert, doubtful for this game, and then right. Gresham, questionable. So don't really count on either of those uh, either of those tight ends this week. And then Ravens side, I feel like the only Ravens guy you can somewhat trust and maybe starting this week is Torrey Smith. And, you know, there's something to be said about consistency. You know, this year he's had a career high 1,100 yards, career high 62 receptions. But since week six, Matt, how many 100-yard games do you think he's had? Uh, since week six, uh, has he had two? Zero. Yeah. Zero. I, I know many, it was low. How many double-digit fantasy games do you think he, he he's had? Since two. Week six? Two. Yeah, and it, obviously because of the, the, those games he caught touchdowns. But right. over the last ten games, he's averaging just fifty-four and a half yards per game. Like that's, I mean, wow. Talk about a guy that's really dropped off from those first few games of the year that was on fire. 
you know, I, I still got him in my top 20 this week, but I'm not I'm not feeling Torrey Smith at all. It, it's just something is up with that offense that is just not clicking for, for Torrey Smith. And, I mean, like I said, the other Ravens players, Flacco, Ray Rice, you're not planning on starting those guys either. Maybe Dennis Pitta, but really nobody on the Ravens side that you really feel good about. Yeah, don't forget, Flacco's hurt. You know, there, there could be yeah. uh, something to be said for that, for, for his weapons, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, Texans and Titans, you know, just a heads up here, this is one of only three games this year that has zero playoff implications for either team. So that means we could see a lot of backups getting a lot of playing time so coaches can begin evaluating them for next year because neither team has anything to play for here. You know, seeding, home field advantage, a chance to get in the playoffs, none of that, totally out of the window here. You know, we said it last week, Matt, you know, that Sean Greed could – could come into his own and kind of, uh, you know, get a lot of work last week, and he did, 20 touches. And I think we could see a lot more of that here. You know, again, you're not starting Sean Green, but, you know, I think that workload is just enough to devalue Chris Johnson to the running back two territory for me. Um, yeah, Marcus, too. Um, a lot of those touches, it wasn't just a, hey, let's see what this guy's got thing. You know, they're still trying to win football games, of course. People are playing for their jobs, and he got a lot of work uh, at the end of the game when the play was uh, when the game was still in the balance. It wasn't just a, you know, let, let's get him in there uh, to see what he can do. You know, they played him at a meaningful time, so I think you're right. That's that's gonna that's gonna continue to happen. No question. You got to move Chris Johnson down. Yeah, people forget that they've actually paid Sean Green a decent amount of money to come there as quote unquote the backup. Um, you know, obviously they paid him enough money that they didn't want to treat him as a backup and treat it more as a 1A, 1B situation, and and that uh, that workload is definitely showing it. Another guy to keep in mind for deeper leagues and, again, daily fantasy leagues, Nate Washington, ninety yard, over 90 yards receiving in back-to-back -back weeks. So just something to uh, keep note on. Texans side, Dennis Johnson's banged up, so Jonathan Grimes is currently getting penciled in as the starter for Week 17. Just further shows you that aside from Andre Johnson, you want no part of this Texans offense. On another side note, Garrett Graham to the IR, so no, no Garrett Graham there either. So really, no, no Texan other than uh, Andre Johnson that you're putting in your lineup. Yeah, but let's give some love to um, the tight end that that is going to be starting now for the Texans. He's actually a Londonderry guy from New Hampshire. No, oh, there you go, One Ryan time. Griffin. Ryan Griffin. So pretty cool. There you go. We should start calling him Brian Griffin, like the. Uh, yeah, I, I hope I'm hoping I, the name's off the top of my head, real quick. And honestly, I didn't know much about him, so hopefully, I'm getting the name right. <laughs> That's nice. Hometown guy, we get his name wrong. That's fine. Yeah, I was amazed. I mean, how did we not know more about it? It's freaking New Hampshire. We got cows and uh, and uh, Ford pickups. We got like five five NFLers that have ever, ever came out of the state, and he's one of them. <laughs> uh, Jaguars and Colts. MJD was back last week, and we kind of saw Jordan Taubman go back to his reserve role. MJD still battling a hamstring injury here. You know, just like the Texans, I think you want no part of the Jaguars' offense. MJD's banged up. You know, Cecil Shorts is obviously out for the year. Blackman got suspended a while ago. Nobody really there that you're looking for. And then Colts' side of the ball, I mean, it's, it's almost equally as bad. Hey, actually, Mercedes Lewis, uh, Marcus, has actually been... Okay. A, to a, a top three, a top three tight end over the last, I think it's three or four weeks. Wow. Um, I heard that on uh, ESPN. I was watching it the other day, so that was actually a big surprise to me. Just the name that's kind of slipped by me. Um, so just a name to throw out there. Take a look at his numbers; it'd surprise you. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I didn't realize that for Mercedes Lewis. I'll have to check that out. Um, but Donald Brown, a guy that's not slipping past people, Matt. You know, showed last week that he's still the running back you want to own in Indy. You know, Richardson last week had more carries, but if I had to choose one, I'm taking Brown here. Which, which one would you take? Yeah, I'd take Brown, and I'd probably chalk it up as a loss. I hope I'm not playing either one of them. Yeah, it's it's not looking good there. And I'd then, rather play. I'd ra honestly, I'd rather play Grimes from the Texans. Yeah, yeah a guy that you know is going to get the full workload. Yeah. And then, then T.Y. Hilton, Matt. You know, since their Week Eight bye, the same week that they lost Reggie Wayne for the season, five or more receptions in seven out of eight games but hasn't had a receiving touchdown during that span. You know, for me, in my fantasy championship, I can't see myself starting a player that I feel doesn't have at least a 60% chance of scoring a touchdown. I mean, yards are great, but unless you're Andre Johnson, you know, a guy like that that can put up 150 yards, you know, 
I guess the 7 to 10 fantasy points you could get out of a guy like T.Y. Hilton, it's just not going to do it for me. There's not enough upside mm-hmm. there for me to want me to put him in my lineup. What do you think about guys like T.Y. Hilton or situations like this? I mean, the thing is, with, with a guy like T.Y. Hilton, it's a little different because he's a guy that I expect just, you know, the averages. If he gets this many attempts, or this many touches, he's got to break one. He's a He's a... He's a fast guy. He's shifty. You know, he can make moves. Uh, he can make plays happen. But obviously, he hasn't been doing that. So, I, I agree with you. You want you want a guy that you expect to score, and clearly, he hasn't been doing that. The passes uh, that he's been receiving, his yards per target is extremely low. You know, they're getting him the football, but just in ways that aren't, um, you know, producing the big play. So, it's tough to to completely hate him because you know what he can do, and if he's getting those touches, you expect that one of these plays is going to be sprung. Um, so it's hard to say no completely to him. If the PPR, it's a lot easier to put him in my lineup. But, yeah, I mean, the, the touchdowns just have not been there. The production I expected when he became the number one certainly hasn't been either. Yeah, I mean, obviously in PPR, he's you want a guy like that. You want a guy that's going to catch you five, six, seven balls a game. You know, he's yeah. definitely been there. Uh, but, Matt, to your point, going back to Mercedes Lewis real quick, a touchdown in each of his last four games. Yeah. So that's getting it done. Receiving yards haven't really been there, but for most tight ends, receiving yards aren't going to be there. Um, but if you can get a touchdown every week, and part of me wonders if that's any correlation to Cecil Shorts being out of the passing game. You know, no Cecil, we just said it, no Cecil Shorts, no Justin Blackman. Who's left? Mercedes Lewis is really the only you know, receiver that they probably have a good rapport with. So, I mean, obviously, if he can get you a touchdown every week, definitely a viable fantasy starter. Yeah, I mean, it's a deep name, you know, a name just deeply if if, if you need something. Jordan Cameron, you know, guy like you, you've been running Cameron, you need a fill-in, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Matt, Jets and Dolphins, I am not going to spend any time on this game. You're starting Mike Wallace, that's it. Nothing. You got anything you want to add? I mean, Tannehill hasn't been completely terrible, but... Uh... I agree with you. Yeah, that's, that's. I mean, if you're starting Tannehill in your fantasy championship, just just stop. I mean, yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, two two quarterback leagues, two quarterback leagues are out there. Basically, I think the analysis is if you've had to play anybody on this either of these teams, it's unfortunate. It's amazing you're still listening to us, and uh, I guess you got to just keep going ahead with it and hope that you get something out of nothing, basically. <laughs> Uh, Lions and Vikings, Matt, you know, we mentioned it earlier about games with no playoff implications, and, and this is one of them. I have Matthew Stafford as my quarterback 10 this week. I'm by far the lowest on him, but single digits in each of his last three weeks, you know, I just got to say real quick for me, I made my fantasy championship in a 16-team league where Matthew Stafford was my fantasy quarterback, you know, despite his pitiful play, made it all the way to the championship, and obviously ended up losing it because of his pitiful play. I mean, he has just been horrendous lately. It's it's kind of tough for me to move him too far down because of this matchup. I mean, we've seen guys light up the Vikings in, in past weeks. But for me, you know, Calvin Johnson's banged up. Joy Bell banged up. Brandon Pettigrew obviously done for the season. And with nothing to play for, you know, I could see the Lions sticking Sean Hill or even Kellen Moore into the game sometime in the middle of the third quarter you know, especially if Stafford begins to play this bad again, can't you? Yeah, um, it's it's unfortunate. This team has so much talent. I, I just can't believe there's nothing for them to play for. You know, they got to get rid of Schwartz there, um, and they got to get somebody on the opposite side of the field with Calvin. Calvin obviously has been banged up, and I think that plays a big part. Obviously, Reggie Bush as well, and, and the struggles with Stafford. Um, you know, I, I didn't expect it last week. I thought two weeks ago was the weather. You know, that was tough in the blizzard there. Um, then the bag week with the, with the tough matchup last week I thought would be a bounce back, and it certainly wasn't. I agree. I don't really want any part in, in him this week. You love the matchup. The Vikings are terrible. Nothing to play for there as well. You know, the coach is already pretty much out of town. Um, you expect him to be gone come Black Monday. So uh, it's it's tough to really recommend anybody here. You know, even Calvin banged up. It's tough to play him. Obviously, you're going to, but it's tough. Yeah, I mean, like we, like I just said, you can see them easily sitting these guys halfway through the game. So, yeah, I, they're they're guys that are centerpieces for the future. Right. There's nothing, nothing in this game. Why would you keep him out there, especially a guy like uh, Johnson who's hurting? Right. Exactly. 
But uh, Matt Castle, Matt, I got him all the way up at quarterback 13 this week. You know, I seem to still be loving for him, even though I, I got burned by him last week. You know, still the number 13 quarterback in fantasy since taking over as a starter, despite that really bad game. You know, ultimately, I think this is his tryout for next season, and I think he wants to do the best to uh, to impress the coaching staff, even though they'll probably see a new coaching staff next year. What are your thoughts on Castle being, you know, a Vikings fan and watching him every week? Yeah, speaking of nothing to play for, I guess this is the exact opposite. Um, right. You know, he's, he's trying out for for anybody right now, really, is, is what he's right. doing. It, it might not necessarily be the Vikings. It could be anybody, but um, I don't think this coaching staff's going to be back. So it's more of a, hey, I can please please stick with me here in Minnesota. I, I can move this offense. And honestly, the way he's been playing, obviously, despite last week, uh, I think the team would have had a much better outcome this season if he was the guy. So he's a guy that has something to play for, for sure. Right. Um, you know, in, in those two two quarterback leagues, I'm not going to re- recommend him as a quarterback one, but a guy that, uh, you know, needs to have a big game. So depending on what kind of cojones he has, uh, could end up with one. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly, a guy certainly playing a defense that has nothing to play for will help. Yeah, he, he's a guy, like I said, that, you know, in, in daily fantasy leagues for the second straight week, I'm rolling with this guy in a lot of them because you can get him on the cheap. And like we just said, he's a guy playing for basically everything, even though the team is playing for nothing. And then, uh, Matt, I mean, you know, the, we just talked about the coaching staff, and, and you know them better than anyone, or at least uh, better than anyone on this podcast. But with Adrian Peterson banged up, you know, and him getting benched, obviously, in the second half of last week and finishing the game with just 12 touches, you know, if you have him, you're starting him. But what kind of workload do you think he's going to have in this meaningless game? I don't think it'll be much. You know, I, obviously, Adrian's going to want to play. Um, Frazier wants to get the win, of course. You know, I'm sure he's holding on to the last grasp of praying that he can keep his job. So best chance to get a win is going to be to feed Adrian. You know, I can see from that aspect. But also, um, the organization's got to look into the future and, you know, having Adrian out there right now when he's even said his body just isn't responding like he wants it to, I don't think he's going to get too much work out there. I really don't. I think we're going to see a lot more. Toby Gerhardt this week uh, with the famous Matt Asiata. Yeah, it's uh, it, like I said, if you have him, you're starting him, but just really hard to get behind him. Um, I think it's going to be a nice showcase game for Patterson, though. Yeah, Patterson is a guy that has been performing. Just really a gut well. call, no reason. I haven't heard anything, no beat writers or anything. I just got a feeling they're going to kind of unleash him this game and get everyone excited for next year. No, I, I totally agree with that as well. Um, Redskins and Giants, you know, this is the final game of the three that we were talking about that had no fantasy, uh, no playoff implication in it. Uh, Pierre Garçon, though, Matt, just pure magic with Kirk Cousins. You know, Garçon with RG3 this year had three games of 100, 100 yards or more or, you know, and three games with a touchdown. In the two games with Cousins, he's had a 100-yard game in each and a touchdown in each. I mean, obviously performing much, much better with Cousins than RG3. You know, top 10 guy this week for me, you know, no question about it. But, uh, I mean, other than Pierre Garçon, not a whole lot else going on in this game for me. I mean, you're starting both running backs. You're starting Andre Brown. You're starting Alfred Morris. But that's about it here, isn't it? Well, um, Jarnell Jernigan actually has had two solid games in a row. Uh, just, a, just a name to throw out there. Here's a guy that I'm pretty sure is a free agent kind of playing for a job. Yeah. Again, one of those tryouts. Um, and like I said, two weeks in a row he's been good. Now, Andre Brown, he had a concussion from what I know, so he's gonna ha- he's a guy to keep an eye on too. I don't know if he's been cleared to play yet. I think he did practice a little bit. Um, so just a name to keep an eye on. Now, if, I'm the jo- if I'm the Giants, what the heck's the point to play the guy a meaningless game coming back from concussion? Uh, you know, we're talking about somebody's livelihood yeah, future. But with Hillis, so, too, Hillis is coming off the concussion. And uh, Brandon Jacobs, obviously done for the year. David Wilson, done for the year. They might have no real other options remaining. You know, My- Michael Cox, that's that's a guy that I think you got to keep an eye on this weekend. I, 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 I got a feeling, you know, it's a meaningless game coming off a concussion. you gotta got to sit the guy. I, I can't imagine playing him, but yeah. who knows. Yeah. Um, real quick, too, just going back to Pierre Garçon, has caught at least five has had five receptions or more in every game this year, 
And another guy this year that has had five or more receptions every game, Antonio Brown um, in this Brown-Steelers game. I have him all the way down as my wide receiver 18 this week because I am really afraid of the Joe Hayden factor. But uh, I'm still amazed that both Garcon and Brown have had at least five receptions in every game this year. That's just amazing, Matt. I mean, to give you an idea, the only person in, in NFL history that's even come close to that Marvin Harrison, back in 2002, had five receptions in every game but one when he had four. So for nobody to have ever done this in history, and granted, both of them could fall on their asses in this last game, but for no one to have done this in history, and then all of a sudden both of these guys have done it this year, really kind of tells you that the NFL is definitely a passing league now. Yeah, no question. Um, Actually... An awesome stat and really incredible, <laughs> you know, if you think about it. Yeah, and then, Matt, just going to back to Antonio Brown here, are you worried about the Joe Hayden factor? No, uh, Joe Joe Hayden has been struggling recently, and uh, he's banged up as well. I say he's been battling an injury, yeah. Yeah, and, I mean, he really has been playing very good. So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about him, actually, at all this week. Generally, I am. You know, Joe Hayden's usually one of those guys that you look to, but with the way he's been playing plus the injury, which I think is a reason for the way he's been playing, I don't know. I don't think I'm too worried about him. Antonio Brown's a tough guy to keep up with uh, no matter who you are, and if you're not healthy, it's it's going to be tough. There's there's not much quicker uh, people in the NFL than, than Antonio Brown, so not worried about Joe Hayden this week because of basically the fact that he's just not too uh, healthy. He's questionable, so you know if that's what you're worried about, maybe look to it Sunday, and, and if he's ruled out, Enjoy it. Have a good time with Antonio. Le'Veon Bell, Matt, nine or more fantasy points in all but one game this season. I'm just going to come out and say I was way wrong on him. Way, way wrong. <laughs> he is a he's a running back one this week. He's the running. He'll be a probably a top you know first or second round pick next year. I got him at number twelve. I, I just I'll admit when I'm right. I'll gloat about it. And when I'm wrong, I'll admit when I'm wrong. And I was way, way wrong on Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Brown side. Josh Gordon, that's it. You don't need any reasons for me to tell you to start him. But, uh, Matt, you know, you brought up earlier Jordan Cameron. Still hasn't been cleared to play yet. I I think I'm staying away from him, even if he does play this weekend. I'm not counting on him at all. You know, uh, Jordan Cameron has been ruled out. Um, Oh, actually, this was – no, never mind. He's pretty much all but ruled out. I mean, yeah, yeah. Never. I don't know if there's anything official yet, but pretty much ruled out. Yes. He hasn't been cleared to play yet. You know, it, it's the writing's on the wall for it. He's probably going to be inactive if he hasn't been ruled it already. It's Josh Gordon, and that's it for the Brown side. Yeah, easy. Uh, Packers and Bears. Aaron Rodgers officially announced the starter. You guys have heard all about this. You know, hey, if you made it this far without him, congrats on hanging on to him. I guess I, I got him as my number six quarterback this week. You know, Matt, let me let me throw this out there for you. If, if you had a guy that's been on fire like Nick Foles or you've been hanging on to, say, Aaron Rodgers all this time and he's coming back and you don't know if he's going to be rusty or how he's going to do, which guy would you roll with this week? Oh, you know, Foles is a tough example because I love the matchup. I, I'd say Foles. Um, as good as he's been, you got to go Foles there, but... I mean, I'm still expecting Aaron Rodgers maybe notch, a notch or two lower, but there's not many guys I'm going to start over him. Um, what about this? Let me throw this one at you. Uh, the, obviously, the other quarterback in this game would be Cutler. Would you start Cutler over Rodgers? No. No way. Hmm. I was going to say, actually, I think I have Cutler higher this week because you may not have known this, but the combo of Jay Cutler and Josh McCown this year, if you had those two as your fantasy quarterback – they would have combined to give you the number three highest quarterback this season behind just Peyton Manning and Drew Brees. So wow. just throwing that out there, if you, if you had these two guys and kind of rolled with whichever guy was the starter, you had the number three quarterback this year, which is something to be said. You know, I think whichever one is the starter next year in Mark Trestman's offense, another steal in fantasy. You're probably going to get either guy in the eighth to tenth round and they'll put up quarterback one numbers like they are this year. Uh, like I said, I got him at four this week, so two spots higher than Rodgers. I, I'm all in on Jay Cutler. Just too many receiving options there for him, and they got, they still have a lot to play for. Um, Packers side, Matt, I mean, Eddie Lacy's banged up in this game, but 
you're, you're pretty much starting everybody in this game. You know, I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to spend too much time on any Lacey because we have a question about him later. But hasn't prote- participated in practice all week, but is still expected to play. Officially ruled as probable. Like I said, we'll we'll talk about him more a little bit later. So we have a really good question from uh, Super Fan Graham a little bit later. So give you some more insight into that. Broncos and Raiders. This is another one. Start all of your Broncos and start Rashad Jennings. You know, not a whole lot of analysis you need for this game, but I think the Broncos are just going to walk all over the Raiders here. You know, Bronco, Broncos are still playing for home field advantage here, so I, I don't expect them to let up off the gas pedal, but did you know the Broncos have outscored the next closest scoring team by 154 points this year, Matt? That's like, amazing. That is a ton of points to say, hey, we're number one with this many points, and the number two guy is still 154 points behind them. It's just amazing. You know, even with that poor defense, they've outscored their opponents by 187 points this year. That's what the Broncos do. They put up huge numbers, and they're going to put up more huge numbers in this game. I'm excited to be. I'm excited to see Pryor back. Where did you rank him, Marcus? Um, actually, I didn't rank him or McGloin this week. Um, kind of uh, the way they've been splitting reps basically lately. Just I wasn't really feeling it, either of them. Um, I, I well, still, Oh, I, I don't know. Prior, prior starting, prior starting, and, and getting all the work this week from all accounts is what they're saying. So yeah, no, he is, and there's been yeah. an argument by his agent about yeah, <laughs> you know, he thinks that they're setting they're setting him up to fail basically. Yeah, um, well, he's he's an idiot. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. I, I can't get behind Terrell Pryor. Um, maybe if you want to take a flyer on him in those daily fantasy leagues, but definitely not in your fantasy championships by any means. I'd rather play him than Castle. Wow, really? That is saying something. Yeah, would, let's, rather let's, play, we can make a beer bet on that one. I'd rather play Pryor than Matt Castle this weekend. Done and done. Done and done. I will definitely take Castle over over Pryor. That is a beer bet to put up there. Um, Bills and Patriots, you know, when these two teams met back in week one, they were just drastically different teams. Injuries have just annihilated both teams. EJ Manuel, you know, banged up and has been participating in practice, but, uh, you know, Thad Lewis named the starter in this one. I love C.J. Spiller and Fred Jackson this week. I think I love them a little bit more with Thad Lewis at quarterback again. You know, I think this is, uh, you know, it's kind of what we're going to see, what we saw from the te- from Tennessee last week, where you're going to see both running backs get close to 20 touches against one of the worst run defenses in the league. If you, Matt, if you were ranking them, which one would you have ranked higher this week? I would have put Spiller higher just because of the big play potential. That's really the only reason. I, I'm not a big fan of either one of them. I feel like they're very much of a you know, a risk risk to, to play, but you're right. The matchup is outstanding. Um, can't ask for much better than this New England defense. So, um, I mean, it does get worse, but it can't get much better. So it, it, it is a nice matchup. You know, if you've got them on your roster, it's tough to sit them this week. Um, still, though, uh, God, it's tough to rely on these guys, I'm telling you. Don't, don't count on it. Yeah. I mean, I still have both of them as running back twos this week. Actually, yeah. I think they have uh, – for some reason, Jackson a little bit lower as a, as a flex slash running back, too. But I do like both of them a lot this week. Uh, Patriots side, you know, the running back situation isn't getting any easier either. Um, we saw all four Patriots running backs active last week. Blunt led the way with the most touches and two touchdowns. Ridley still saw 15 carries. Vereen, just three touches, which is really surprising, the same as uh, Brandon Bolden. Who do you trust the most out of the four of them this week, Matt? None, and I think we should ban talking about them from any of our podcasts because every time we do, it just makes us look like complete idiots. Yeah. You know, that, what, why, why would you even ask me? Is anyone going to take what I say and go, oh, yes, that's going to happen because uh, he's done so well predicting it in the last three weeks. I have no idea. I thought Vereen was going to be back last week. I thought it was just kind of a fluke what happened the week before that. Um, who would have thought he'd be less involved with one of their biggest weapons going out when he was one of their biggest weapons prior? There's no rhyme or reason. I, I don't I don't get it. Um, I don't want to play any of them. If you have to, who knows, maybe you'll get two touchdowns out of them or, or maybe you'll get one fantasy point. Yeah, I mean, listen, if, if any of us, you know, if any of our jobs were to, dis, to you know, basically predict what Bill Belichick is going to do, Everybody would be homeless. Like it just—that's just how it is. Because you can't do it. You just—I feel like do I'm it. like I feel like it's like uh, the local weatherman. So is it going to snow this weekend, Matt? 
That's that's how. Yeah, there's at. a friggin' fifty percent chance Stephen Ridley is gonna get fifteen carries this week. I don't know. That's exactly how we should start predicting the Patriots. <laughs> uh, predicting the Patriots' offense next year. You know, I, I like that analogy. That's perfect. That's definitely yeah. how we should start referring to. Yeah. Him so uh, Stephen Ridley, how do you like him this weekend? Uh, cloudy with a chance of rain. Uh, back to you, Marcus. <laughs> Laguerre Blunt. Um, plottiness with a chance of touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so uh, let's move on then. Bucks and Saints, you know, I endorsed the hell out of Marcus Colston last week, despite uh, and despite the shit that he just took all over me last week. I'm still going to uh, go back to the well on him. Just seems to finally look healthy again and just be clicking with Breeze. I really like Marcus Colston again this week. But, um, you know, bu- at Bucks side, Matt, I'm kind of staying away from that side as much as possible. Aside from Vincent Jackson, you know, they really haven't gotten anything done, and even Vincent Jackson has kind of been struggling lately. 75 yards or less in four of his last five games. The Saints have a strong pass defense, but are missing, obviously, Kenny Vaccaro out for the season, which should make things a little bit easier, but I can't really trust anybody on the Bucks side. And Saints, I mean, you're starting Breeze. You know, you're starting Colston, you're starting Jimmy Graham. The running back situation is another one that's kind of been up in the air with the way that uh, Mark Ingram's been playing lately. Hard to get behind a lot of people in this game. Yeah, Bobby Rainey is a guy who I expected to play well last week. He had been doing well against good matchups before. The Saints were a good matchup at the beginning of the year, not so much lately. Um, You know, if... I can see if you have to play Bobby Rainey, and I, I don't think anything's going to change on the fact that he's going to keep giving the touches. He'll get the work. Uh, and, you know, he saved you last week, vultured a day, well, saved the day with that touchdown. Um, and, you know, I could see another one this week. So he's not a guy that I'm going to say don't play. Certainly not. Uh, for what it's worth, Drew Brees needs just 214 passing yards for his fourth career 5,000-yard passing season. No other quarterback in history has even done it twice. Just throwing that out there. I, I think they help him get to that 5,000 yards. Not that he'll need help. I mean, it's 214 yards, but I think Drew Brees gets there. 49ers and Cardinals, you know, I was the only ranker this week not to rank Jimmy Graham as my number one overall tight end. And it's because I love Vernon Davis. I absolutely love him. You know, we've been obviously he had a real bad week last week, but... Uh, has been getting touchdowns left and right from uh, Colin Kaepernick. Marcus, you, you you probably shouldn't say that in public because he ruined thousands and millions of people's fantasy Super Bowls last week with that beautiful game he put up. Yeah, a beautiful stinker. It's Don't nice. ever admit that again, and yeah, especially well, not, not unless you have coverage and protection. What, <laughs> speaking of which, did you see the play a couple weeks ago when he got pulled down by, by his... Uh, by yeah. His, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of coverage and protection and Brennan Davis. Oh. No kidding. <laughs> um, but uh, Arizona, worst in the league against the tight end this season. I, I just, you know, if, if there was a week that Vernon Davis was out gonna, going to out. Shit, play, I, just, I just figured it out. Sorry. You know why he sucked so bad last week? Why? He probably wore a cup for the first time in his career. Made it a little bit awkward they're, to run around in. Yeah, they're constrictive. You know, that's why people don't wear them. But I'm sure after getting tackled by the balls, you probably decide, I'm going to wear a cup now. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's, let's move on from Vernon Davis and the, and the dick. Yes, it's week 17. No <laughs> one's really listening. Yes. <laughs> um, so Michael Crabtree, you know, seems to have that connection back with Kaepernick. He's another guy that I like a lot in this game. But I am worried about Kaepernick and Gore in this tough matchup. You know, way down on on Bolden now with Crabtree back. I didn't realize this, Matt, but Bolden's only hundred yard receiving game this season was that two hundred yard explosion back in Week One. That is just, I mean, talk about consistently just that. Nah, you know, that that just uh, Anquan Bolden just not getting it done for you. Hopefully, he's out of your lineup. I think Cardinal side not starting any Cardinals here. I really, I'm really down on Larry Fitzgerald again here too. I just, if you have him, you probably don't have better options. But another guy that I really just kind of want to stay away from this week as well. Uh, I, I'm not going to sit Larry Fitzgerald by any means. Uh, the past defense on this team, you know, yeah, the defense has been a lot better um, the second half of the year, no doubt about it. But I don't know. They, they've already clinched their their uh, their spot. I don't know. I'm not sitting Larry Fitzgerald. You've got him. You're playing him. No question. 
right. Chiefs and Chargers. Um, sounds like the Chiefs, we just, you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but Charles may rest some of their starters here. You know, it, the only the only ones you were considering were Charles and maybe Alex Smith here. But uh, like I said, I got to believe that if either play, it's not for very long. I wouldn't have either of them in my starting lineup if I could help it. And then uh, for anybody that's considering starting Dwayne Bowe, first, give up fantasy football. It's not for you. You shouldn't be starting Dwayne Bowe. But second, he's already been ruled out, so definitely just go ahead and get him out of your lineup. Uh, hopefully you weren't already considering him. But Matt, you know, Chargers side of the ball here, obviously a lot more fantasy relevancy, I think, because you know, these guys are still going to play quite a bit. Ryan Matthews, 119 total yards or more, and a touchdown in each of his last three games. He's just been a complete stud. This is the guy that I've been harping about all preseason, a guy that I loved all preseason, and he's really just making me look like a genius now. And then finally, Keenan Allen, five touchdowns in the last three weeks, but under 60 receiving yards in every game in each of those three games. Are you worried about him against this tough uh, Chiefs defense? No, I mean it's it's the back. It's most likely you're going to see a lot of the backup Chiefs defense. So no, I mean we're talking about a team that doesn't have anything to play for in Kansas City. So I'm not worried about having to play them. Sure. At most, you're going to see a half out of the starters. I really believe that. Yeah, I do. I do too. There's just no reason to have them in there. Rams and Seahawks. You know, you're starting both running backs. You're starting Russell Wilson, and and that's about it. You know, Zach Stacy, seven touchdowns in his last seven games. For those of you that point to a tough uh, Seattle run defense, you know, I'll show them the 134 rushing yards that uh, Zach Stacy had back in their Week 8 matchup. And then, uh, you know, speaking of their, their Week 8 matchup, for what it's worth, Marshawn Lynch had his worst rushing game of the season in that game. Eight carries, just 23 yards. Like I said, you're starting both guys. Just, uh, you know, I think Stacy will perform better than you expect and maybe Lynch a little bit you know, not as not as good as you'd probably expect. Yeah, and Bal Doug Baldwin has really been uh, his favorite receiver there. Last week, obviously, was a tough week for Doug. But, um, you know, just another name there, wide receiver three, four type guy that, uh, you know, you, you could do a lot worse than. Yeah. Eagles and Cowboys, you know, according to Ian Rappaport, Tony Romo underwent back surgery this morning. You know, they finally came out and said, you know, he's out for the season. I still can't make sense as to why they refuted all the reports on Monday as to why, you know, that he wasn't going to be out for the season. I don't understand. That didn't make any sense to me as to why they just kind of pushed it off and then did it. Um, does this affect the way you look at the Cowboys' offense in this game? I mean, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Romo Romo had a great season. Look at the numbers. They they were outstanding, really. Um, better better real, real football than, than fantasy, you know, so... Yeah, I think this certainly hurts the offense. Um, now, it hurts, it hurts the offense, but what does it change anybody that you would normally start? For example... Yeah, maybe I think I think it helps DeMarco Murray. I think okay. this this is going to make the coaching staff throw the football... I mean, run the football a little more. Um, Kyle Orton is capable. He's a he's a perfectly fine NFL quarterback. He's, he's done well in the league. Uh, and he's not a particularly old guy. I think he's around 31, 32 years old, so he's still got it, you know, uh, physically. So I think it's going to – I think – but but he's still not as capable as Tony, so I think that means that they're going to have to lean on DeMarco more. You know, this is a big game for them. They have to win. DeMarco is going to be pretty much their their best option, I think. Um, they're going to keep a balanced offense, and, but, but I think Murray is going to get more work than we have seen recently. Yeah, and I think maybe it also bumps up probably Jason Witten because you'll probably see a lot more checkdowns than you normally yeah. have. Yeah, uh, just that, that I, I heard uh, CBS, I think it was, just a little food for thought. Fifteen attempts from Kyle Orton as a Dallas Cowboy, not one has gone to Tony. Uh, sorry, Des Bryant. So, yeah, not not a huge sample size, just interesting. Yeah, and like I said, it probably it'll probably like you said, Matt, move. Des Bryant down a little bit, move Jason Witten up, move DeMarco Murray up. But uh, if you were planning on starting those guys before, I think you're still starting them here. It's not going to bump them to any situation where you're not starting them or, or what have you. Um, but just, you know, a little, like you said, food for thought, just something to think about. Um, Must-win game, for obviously, for both teams. So 
you know, I think for Philadelphia, you're not worried about any of their starters. You're starting McCoy, you're starting Foles, you're starting Deshaun Jackson. And, Matt, what about Riley Cooper? I mean, under 75 receiving yards in his last five games, but this Cowboys defense is awful, just awful. Yeah, terrible defense. Um, you gotta, you got to recommend any Philadelphia Eagles guy, uh, you know, against a matchup like this. you got to love it, so... You know, is he definitely going to have a big day? Of course not, but, uh, you know, chances are, chances are much greater. Wide receiver two territory for you, though, for Riley Cooper? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think he'll be uh, he'll be solid in this game, and I, and I know last time I endorsed Riley Cooper, it really came back to bite me in the ass, so we'll, we'll see what happens here. But uh, make sure to follow Matt and I on Twitter, me at Marcus Katkin, Matt at Matt Dougal. Keep sending your questions to hashtag blindsidepod or, or blindside at blindsidefootball.com. And don't forget, Matt, Rob, and I still live tweeting every Sunday from noon till kickoff. This is your last chance, guys. This is the end of the season. Let's you know get you your fancy championship if you haven't got it already. Send those questions to hashtag AskBlindSide. Matt, like I alluded to earlier, we have a question from Superfan Graham. It's our only question we're going to answer in uh, this final this final podcast before the end of the season. He asks, final week of a two week Super Bowl. You know, if playing his best roster, he's going to have four guys playing in the Bears-Packers game. He's going to have Cutler, Forte, Jeffrey, and Nelson. Would you hedge your risk a little bit and play someone ranked slightly below them in another game so that you kind of spread out your risk a little bit? So, for example, he says, would you start Phillip Rivers over Jay Cutler? No, um... I'm still going Cutler there. Yeah, I mean, I understand what he's thinking, certainly, but does he have also the other train of thought where, you know, who are the four, did he say? It's Cutler, Forte, Jeffrey, and Nelson. Okay, so, you know, what if Cutler does have a, a four-touchdown game and three of them go to your guys, you know what I mean? Then you get into the, those double points. I understand hedging your bets because... You know, if he has one of those one touchdown, three interception type days, well, then your other guys are probably going to have a rough day too, possible. Yeah. But you know, running backs are certainly a different component of uh, the offense from a from a quarterback. So it doesn't mean that he's going to have a bad day if Cutler does. Forte could still salvage a day. And you know, there's been plenty of times when a quarterback has a shitty day and a wide receiver has a great day too. So um, I, I think you got to play your best players. The guys that have got you there is who you got to play now. It's a good thought, uh, and you know certainly come Monday morning you might wish you did it. But I I got I recommend playing your best players regardless. I I do as well. I still recommend start starting your best players, and uh, you know the other the other option he had Matt here too that he just wanted to point out. Um, like for example, would you start Alfred Morris over Forte just to kind of hedge that risk a little bit? Well, I can't believe you can't play Alfred Morris. Uh, anyways. He but, had, I forgot no. who the running back he had was, but he had a pretty, I, I think it was Jamal Charles, to tell you the truth. So I'd rather uh, sit Jamal. <laughs> he has a, uh, he has a pretty I'd, stack. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you, wouldn't you honestly this week, considering because of the fact the Chiefs probably aren't going to work him too much, I'd rather play Morris. Yeah, I, I would too, but I was just using that as, you know, his yep. question. And, uh, yeah. But all things aside, if you couldn't start both, which one would you choose, Morris or Forte? Forte. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm still still going Forte there. And then finally, um, he just asks, you know, if Lacey doesn't play, he is probable for this game. It sounds like he's going to play, but let's say something weird comes up. You know, he, in warm-ups he hurts himself or, or something happens. If Lacey doesn't play this weekend, how high would you rank James Starks against the Bears? Would you put him higher than a guy like Alfred Morris? Well, I mean, who do you want your running back going up against, Dallas or Chicago? Take your pick. Uh, maybe I guess you could throw New England in there if you want, but I'm picking those two. So, boy, I, I think you can pretty much slot him where Lacey is. Um, maybe a couple couple back because he's not as versatile in the, in the receiving game. Not as good in the receiving game as I think Lacey is. But, yeah, I mean, from what we've seen from him this year and stretches when he's been healthy throughout his career, he's been a pretty good player. Uh, you know, look, thinking back specifically to that playoff stretch where he looked awesome, um, pretty close to where Lacey would be. So what I think you got to do is make sure if you're planning on playing Lacey this weekend, you've got him on your bench 
just in case that last minute Reggie Bush type thing happens, like you said, Marcus, where the warm ups, you know, he's just not quite feeling right, you pretty much will still have Eddie Lacy and, and Starks. So yeah. Uh, I mean I had for example, I had Lacey number two overall this week in my running back rankings. I don't think oh, Starks wow. I don't think no. Starks is gonna be that high. No but I think be top fifteen with top ten upside. Yeah. If if he were to play. Um you know, if, probably top ten. I'm honestly probably top ten against that came, matchup. Well, I was gonna say if it came down to it, I would still probably start Morris over Starks. Uh, I wouldn't. If 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 Lacey's out, I wouldn't. All right. Well, sorry, Graham. It doesn't sound like we helped you there. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, Matt, uh, that pretty much does it for the podcast. Uh, do you have anything you wanted to add? No, but here, here, a little more for 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 why I think that um, Rogers' first game back in a while, I can see them trying to ease him a little bit, uh, lean Starks in, into the lineup a little bit more, help help Rogers get back into the swing of things. So that's why I that's why I'm thinking Starks. But no, nothing else other than that. Uh, it's been a fun year. Happy we're gonna get a little bit of break here. It's been been enough of these, that's for sure. Um, but excited for next year, of course. You know, sucks that it's over, but hey, now you start planning for next year and get excited for the rookies coming in and what these guys are going to do next year and their new positions, their you know, the new teams, or just uh, as they grow as a player. It's fun. Yeah. Make sure, uh, make sure we want to stick up, stick around for our uh, our wrap up podcast, season ending podcast next week, um, and then be on the lookout this uh, this upcoming season for our draft guide, which will be available. And, uh, I mean, have a happy and safe New Year. And like I said, we'll have our season-ending uh, wrap-up podcast just after the New Year for you. Yo, check it. It's my time. I'm rapping about Blindside Fantasy Football Podcast in this rhyme because they got me the inside scoop on Adrian Peterson. Yeah, he's that dude on Cam Newton. Yeah, they give me the news more on Megatron, Calvin Johnson. If I stay tuned on all quarterbacks, all Three happens to be the fastest QB in the league. In fact, Colin Kaepernick is rider QB for them 49ers. It ain't hard to see, uh. Some awesome people hosting Marcus Katkin and Matt Dugall. You should be joining skinny or fat, short or tall. Anyone can tune in to Blindside Football. Have a try, dude. Listen on I.